Good morning. Who's excited for our first sew along? Uh, this is the first time I have done this, uh, teaching it live on Facebook Live, so bear with me if we have a few hiccups. But today is the first day of our kickoff for Down the Rabbit Hole, which is right here behind me, the quilt. Uh, how many of you guys have gone out and watched the video on how to pick fabric for this project I posted the other day? Um, just curious if, if you've gone through that. If not, make sure you check that video out afterwards if you haven't picked out your fabric. Good morning, Sarah. So excited. So um, that would be the first question is, did you watch the video on fabric? Uh, second, let me know what your skill level is. And third, how many other sewing longs have you guys done? So if you guys just want to pop it in the comments, I will be following those as we go along. Um, but I thought I would start with how this whole pattern came to be and how I discovered the uh, Cat's Cradle ruler. So last year I got this ruler. And this is the original Cat's Cradle ruler. And it goes from one and a half up to four inch finish. Uh, a Cat's Cradle block is right here. It is made up of a large triangle, two small triangles, and a square. Let me point down lower. Large, too small, square. So, hey Penelope, welcome. Uh, so anyway, this ruler would only do a four inch square and I wanted to try it out. So the first project I did with it is our around the corner. And this one uses the smallest block you can make from the ruler. Uh, let's see here, right here. It's a one and a half inch square and made up this little quilt it has 36 blocks in it and it's only 11 inches square. So that's what started my passion with the Cat's Cradle ruler because this was the ruler that um, I realized you didn't have to cut any triangles to make a block that actually has three triangles in it. So once I did that, I kept using this for all the small things that would go up to four inches and then the next year they came out with the Cat's Cradle Extra Large, which is the ruler we're using for the project. And I'm going to go over cutting today, and I'm going to go over um, how to organize yourself for the sew along. And then if anyone has questions on fabric, I will definitely answer the fabric question. Good morning, Lois. Thanks for joining us. Um, so the first thing is cutting. And I want to talk about the fact that it uses fat quarters. And that's what I discussed in the fabric uh, requirements class. And this part, you need 12 fat quarters for the project. And I recommend if you have a bundle kicking around in your room to use it just to see how it looks with this. You'll need fat quarters, a background, and two border fabrics. The pattern, if you haven't already gotten it, is a digital download on our website. So you can get it there. And rulers around the website, which is the Whimsical Workshop. So for next week, we would have you have it cut and have your tools ready and we'll walk through sewing the blocks. Um, the other thing I want to go over today are the two techniques. So if you have gotten your pattern, you'll notice that there are cutting for traditional and cutting for ruler. And I wanted you guys to see what's the difference before you commit to how you cut these. Hey, Kathy. So first thing you do is you get your fat quarters open and you press them. Always press your fabric before you cut it because if you have little seams and wrinkles in it, when you cut it, it can distort the size of your block, which will then make your block off when you go to sew it. Um, once you've done that, you can decide which method you want to cut. And I'm going to go over that first and then we'll do the cutting. The traditional method for a cat's cradle block, and this block has been around forever is you would start with your corner square and then you have to cut a four and seven eighths inch square cut that across the diagonal to give you two triangles which you have to be careful with because they are biased and they can stretch that's what makes this block a little more challenging to do it the traditional way so you would put those on there next and then the last step would be to take a large triangle and sew it on there like that. That is the traditional method. It is the fewest steps. 
but you do have to deal with these two being all bias and then this big guy being bias. I'm going to show you next week how to sew this way so if you don't have the ruler or you just don't want to have another ruler you can make this whole project without a ruler. So that is the, that one. Now if you want to use the cat's cradle ruler this is how you do that one. And again, I'm go this is just a crash course. We're going to go over this. Um, I don't expect anyone to start piecing until next week. So let me get myself. How many of you guys have a sewing table just full of stuff? No matter what, you can never find what you're looking for. So with the Cat's Cradle Ruler, it does come with instructions on how to use the ruler, which we'll be referring to. But if for some reason you were to lose these, you could go out to the Creative Grids website, creativegridsusa.com, type in the type of ruler you have, and you can download the instructions and print them off, which is what I did here because I couldn't find mine. But that's another reason I really love cat, uh, Creative Grid rulers, is they, they support their rulers. So, on to the next one. Um, to do the Cat's Cradle Ruler method, you need to cut... Uh, all rectangles and squares. We're not cutting any triangles, which is what makes it so easy. So from your background, you would cut two rectangles and you would cut from one fat quarter two squares. And then for your large back, you would cut a, re a large rectangle. And this is going to end up making two blocks at a time. So though there are more steps, it goes faster. So that's the cutting for it. Real quick run through is you end up sewing these like this. You sew them together. You press them. Then the ruler shows you how to mark your back because this is here it is with the big rectangle and the little squares. You sew on the drawn lines, which you can see better here, sewn on the drawn lines, and then you cut them apart to create two cat's cradles, which then you square up. And that's a really quick run through on how to use the ruler method. Uh, the ruler method. So you have to decide on your end before next week, your fabric, and which method you want to use, and if you um, bought the pattern. I should have sent you, oops, sent you a revised pattern that included the ruler instructions here. And then on the inside, I included all of the cutting instructions for either traditional or ruler. So don't do what I did yesterday. I went to cut the ruler method, but I looked at the traditional one. So either put a piece of paper blocking one set of instructions and just follow this side or vice versa. Um, but if you happen to do what I did, I cheated because my print was so busy and I sewed the two pieces back together in my fat quarter and then I recut the square. So can you see the seam there? So you can save it. You can't really see that from the front. And once it's quilted, it'll go away. But the best thing to do would be to cut it right from the get-go. Um, but so a tip for you is to, you know, block off one side or the other. Um, so let's get into actually cutting our fabrics. I'm going to start with the traditional method. And then I'll move on to the ruler method. So for traditional method... Gotta find the fat quarters. There we go. Uh, first thing I do is pair up my fat quarters into six sets, one with two fat quarters in each set. And I do this for all cutting, but I have these circle labels. I don't know if you can see it there. There we go. There we go. And I these are just, you buy them in the label department at Staples. And I label A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and I label my fabrics. Can we see what the ruler looks like? The cat's cradle ruler looks like the big one for the project looks like this. And on the ruler, it actually tells you what size. Where's my board? Here we go. 
that tells you what sizes you need to cut for however what size block you need. So if you want to do a four, this ruler goes from four and a half to eight inch finish. So you would just see four and a half. It tells you how many of the squares to cut in the size, how many of the background rectangles to cut in the size, and then how many of the big rectangles in the size. So you can do one, two, three, four, five, six, eight different sizes with this ruler. The little guy, you can do same thing. Gives you the sizes. And it gives you one, two, three, four, five, six different sizes that go from one and a half up to four. So if you think you're going to use more cat's cradle blocks in the corners of traditional quilts, which if you look um, on the group this week, I've been starting to post other quilts that use these rulers, you would go with the smaller ruler. If you're going to do more of these bigger blocks, this one actually starts at four and a half and goes up. So you could get away with some smaller ones with this and go all the way up to the big size, which is what we're doing. So those are the rulers. So back to the cutting. Oh, first of all, do you like my felt board that I made out of a 16 inch ruler this morning? Just so I could show you guys stuff. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, that's that one. So if you're going to cut, you first take your fat quarters, you pair them up. Because in this quilt, um, two pairs are going to make four blocks. And, oh wait, no, two pairs will make eight blocks. Then we have those over there. So you get four going this way and then four that would be flipped. So you take your fat quarters. I like to cut them two at a time. And I'm going to show you a trick with fat quarters. Um, when I went ahead and designed this quilt, Michael Miller specifically sent the fabric and said, we want some fat quarter quilts, which is how this one came about, and this one over here is Crossroads, which is Friday. They wanted us to make sure we used their fat quarter bundle and that we used all the fabrics. So when someone comes to me and asks me to do a fat quarter quilt, it's actually much harder to design because I have to do all the math first. Um, our goal when we design a fat quarter quilt is to utilize 80% of the fat quarter. We don't want to do the whole hundred because sometimes fat quarters we know are skewed and they don't cut them right. Um, and for all my newbies, a fat quarter is a 18 by 21 piece of fabric. A quarter yard is 9 inches by 42. So it's long and skinny. A fat quarter being 18 by 21 is the same square inch of fabric, it's just short and squat, kind of like me, um, versus long and skinny. So these people started using them for applique, but now in the industry is realizing that people are more willing to pick up a bundle of fat quarters than buy yardage. So we're seeing a huge increase in requests for fat quarters. Um, so if you get this, we, we have started in our newer patterns, giving you a diagram of how to cut the fat quarter. This being one of our older patterns, it doesn't have a diagram. So you have to figure out before you cut this, where are you going to utilize the fabric? Because sometimes if you cut it this way, you can't get all your pieces, where if you cut it this way, you can. That being said, when I personally am designing a quilt, I try to make sure that it'll work either way so you don't get in trouble. But I'm going to draw on mine how you would cut this, and that way you guys can see it. How many of you guys have like a million rulers? I have so many rulers. It's like, which ones do I pick? Um, the first thing you would do is square up one end. And there is a video on our YouTube channel all about basic cutting so if you are new to quilting make sure you check out that video it talks about just cutting for everything you, you, information you need for all your projects so I squared up one side and flip it over the first two cuts for the traditional method and I'm going to make sure I read the pattern um, is to cut two eight and seven eighths inch squares Here's the thing about our patterns, we will always list these in the order you should cut them. So don't skip to like the third cutting and then go back up to the first. We do try to do the largest pieces first because you can always 
get smaller pieces from the remains of a larger strip. So the first cut on this is two eight and seven eighths inch squares. Do I have any trimmers out there? Anybody who just likes to trim um, and hates cutting seven eighths, you can bump these up to nine inches. If you don't want to cut eight and seven eighths, cut nine inches. If you don't want to cut four and seven eighths, cut five inches. But then when you're done with your block, you will need to square it up to finish at eight and a half. I don't like to trim up blocks, though the ruler method I'm going to show you, we do need to trim them up. Um, but for traditional methods, anytime I'm doing traditional, I just give you the actual size. So the first thing we need to cut is the 8 and 7 eighths. You are cutting, um, for traditional, it doesn't matter which way you orient the fat quarter. Um, for the ruler one, there is a way. But I like to start where I cut my strips from the 18 inch measurement going up the 20 inch measurement. So let me just draw the line to show you what I'm talking about. And I'll hold this up here in just a second. See if we were in a classroom, you guys could mingle amongst yourselves and talk while I'm doing this. So you need to do that in the comments. All right, so this is the, this is eight and seven eighths inch strip this side this is my leftover then you, after you cut your eight and seven eighths you then would trim off the salvage and I'm not cutting this just so you guys can see the layout we got you covered I can't tell you how much technology I've had to learn in the last two months every time I turn around there's another piece of video equipment or microphone showing up okay so there would be the two eight and seven eighths inch squares. So salvage, square, and square. And I'm not sure how hard you can, how easy that is to see. We're also learning lighting. <laughs> All right, once you cut those, you would go ahead and cut your next cut, which is four, four and a half inch squares. So from the remaining fabric, you would cut the four and a half inch strip from the 20 inch length and then you would cut the four and a half inch squares going up. From the fat quarter you will now see this first part is the eight and a half stopping here or eight and seven eighths then we have our four and a half which then we cut into four and a half inch squares and then we have this much fabric left over. So if you watched my fabric video You'll know I said um, I only am using a fat quarter bundle. I don't have an extra yard to do my border. So if you, I'm going to come up with a piece border that uses this leftover. So if you have the leftover and you want to do a piece scrappy border around it, hang on to it. That will be coming at the end, towards the end of the week. And that is how you would cut the traditional method. So once you've cut your squares, the eight and seven eighths inch squares, you need to cut them across one diagonal. And that is done with a ruler. And you need to try to be as accurate as possible. I have a method for how I cut across the diagonal using for smaller triangles, but I don't have a square, a triangle ruler big enough. So when you go to cut this across a diagonal, back up here. You're going to use a line on your ruler, a 45 degree line on your ruler, and you're going to align the 45 degree line along a straight edge of the square. You're going to align the point of the ruler with the point of the square, and the other edge of the ruler with the other point of the square, and then you can cut it across the diagonal. Um, you want to make sure you're using that 45 degree line because that's the only thing we have to try to align those two points. If you just go point to point and don't use a straight edge, it's not going to be as accurate. So anyway, these get cut the same as the big ones then. So you need to take a ruler. And you need to use the 45 degree line, align one straight edge of the square, point to point, and cut. So it looks like 
looks like this. Okay, so that was it. 45 degree line across this edge, point to point, cut it. So there's traditional. For the uh, ruler method, much easier to cut. That one, down to our last set here. Again, you square up the one edge. And this one I'm going to go ahead and cut it so you can see the pieces. Alright, so the first cut on this, now this is where the orientation of the fat quarter is important. The largest rectangles for, for the ruler method are 9 by 10 inch rectangles. So if you remember, our fat quarters are 18, usually by 21. 18 by 20, 18 by 21. Um, usually uh, we try to figure 21 is the average length. You may get ones longer. But if you think about it, if it's a 9 by 10 inch rectangle and you were to cut this 9 inches and you need to get two of them, 2 times 10 is 20. You can't get it out of the short side. So for those rectangles, you need to cut the 9 inches from the long and then cut two 10 inch rectangles from there. Does that make sense? So let me go ahead and cut this. So we've got that. Okay, so there is the nine by 20 in my scrap to cut the four inch square, four and uh, whatever the four inch, four and a half inch squares I think it is, I will look in a second. From the nine inch by 20 inch strip, I trim off one end just to square it up. And I'm using a 15 inch ruler if you're watching the video shot down later. Um, I keep square rulers in here, I have a six and a half a nine and a half, a twelve and a half, a fifteen, a sixteen and a half. I use these all the time. Um, the more you cut, which having made thousands of quilts, I have cut a lot of quilts, um, the more you cut, the more you realize you can get fatigue from wrestling with big long acrylic rulers. So if you can only have one ruler, get an eight and a half by twenty four inch ruler. That's this guy. But as you quilt more and more, you're going to start building up your ruler collection. Trust me, it happens. Um, and I would start with getting square rulers after this because square rulers are easier to handle. There's just less acrylic that you're moving around constantly. So we've cut our nine and a half from 20, nine and a half, or I'm sorry, our nine inch strip from the 20 inch length. And then we go ahead and we cut our two 10 inch measurements. So we end up with two 9 by 10 inch rectangles. That is the vital part about ruler cutting. Make sure you cut it from that way. Now I like to pair my pieces up and cut them at the same time. And then back to the stickers I was showing you earlier. Um, for this project, if you read the pattern, all the fat quarters are A. So putting A, 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 it's not going to make a lot of sense. So what I did for this one is I wrote 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. So I made two labels and I put the ones on opposite fabric. So I know that this fabric, oh here, here's a good example. These both have a 2 on them. I know this is the pair I chose to do in the beginning. Um, Obviously, I'm working with bright colors and it's a little easier for me, but if you're doing it with the actual fabric, they're all blue. So over time, you might be like, okay, I don't remember which two I paired. So this is a good way to keep them straight. And again, these label stickers, you can buy them um, in Staples. Amazon, I'm sure, has them. Um, but I do that for all of my cutting. I cut everything at once. I label it with the letters. I use, it's another excuse to buy something cute. Um, I use serving trays 
and I put all of my parts on the serving tray as I cut it and label it. Uh, obviously I'm showing you guys this so it's kind of messy but um, you'll see that they're all just listed and labeled on here and then I can put the tray on the shelf if I'm not working on the project. Um, but it's also organized and then if it's something that's going to get packed and put away and I'm not going to use it for a few months because we know we have UFOs, um, everything's already labeled so when you pull it out in six months you know where all, what pieces are what because you've labeled everything. So once you've done that, um, let's get back over here to the cutting. I know I go on tangents, sorry. This is just like a regular class here. So you um, cut your nine and a half by ten or your nine by tens then you need to cut four four and a half inch rectangles so with the remaining strip you just cut a four and a half inch strip and you can get uh, the four four and a half inch squares from the strip so here's another there's the four and a half inch strip I will sometimes especially if I have to cut a ton of these will fold this in half square it up and then I'm cutting um, two of each at a time. It's just a shortcut. It's just if you're really comfortable cutting go ahead and do this. Um, and if you're doing a video and trying to go through it for people, go ahead and do this. Alright, so there's the four and a half and there are the squares. So for the ruler method you need four and a half inch squares of the two fabrics nine by ten inch rectangles for the two fabrics and then from your background you cut four and three quarter by five and three quarter rectangles and that's it so cutting is very easy for the ruler method so with all of that the other thing I wanted to mention is if you are new and if you are leave a comment so I know that you're new um, to quilting I would not cut two fat quarters at the same time until you feel comfortable cutting um, that way if you mess up, you've only messed up one fat quarter and not both. Um, and if you're like me, I have no wiggle room in this fat quarter bundle because I had 12 fat quarters. Which is why I had to patch my two pieces together at the beginning. Again, quilting, there are perfectionists and there are non-perfectionists. I kind of fall in the middle. And I've also learned making so many quilts over the years that, perf you know, done is better than perfect in a lot of cases. And this is a learning experience and, you know, just enjoy it. Have fun. Relax with it. This is a great one to start with because it is a fun, easy project. Alright, so for next week, pick your fabrics, cut your pieces. Um, that being said, if you have any questions about cutting or fabrics, you can email me at Heidi at the whimsicalworkshop.com or you can go to our website thewhimsicalworkshop.com and just do info or just say, hey, I need to contact you. Um, and I will be happy to answer your questions. I am available all week. Um, I do want to talk about a couple other tools that you may need for next week. Um, these are not, some are required, but some are just suggestions. Um, the first one is thread. Let's talk about thread. Uh, for piecing these quilts, there um, are a lot of rules of thumb about what color thread to use. So for mine, you'll notice I was piecing with white and that was so you guys could see it. In general, a lot of people would say go ahead and piece the whole thing with black thread. Um, but I would probably, in a, if I was just sitting down and sewing this, I would probably piece it with gray because gray will blend into the color and it blends into the black. It's kind of in the middle. Um, this is my lightest gray. It's like a dove gray. I also have a charcoal gray. So I would probably use a charcoal gray on my project. For this project, um, you could use white because every print has white in it. Um, but if you want to have something that blends a little better, gray will work for this one as well. It's a really nice one to use. Um, I have a whole, I have three drawers of thread. But the four colors I use all the time for piecing is either, well five, I use light gray, dark gray, black, cream, I go through cream like crazy, and white. Um, and 
the number for the cream I like, for, and these are all Aurifil 50 weight. I love to piece with Aurifil, and I love to piece with 50 weight. Um, this is color 2000. The gray is color 2600. White is white, but it's 2024. Um, and I don't have a black one up here. But if you're just starting out and you're totally enamored with all the beautiful colors of threads, sadly, these are probably the ones you're going to use the most. When you want to use the colors is when you're quilting or if the whole quilt, if my whole quilt was blues, I would piece with a very dull blue. And that's the thing about threads. You want to go with the dullest color for piecing and most of the time for quilting because you want the threads to melt into the fabrics. So those are the threads. You'll need to pass some thread. Um, Make sure next week you have a good pair of small, sharp scissors if you're doing the ruler method. Um, there's just one little point where we snip it, but make sure you have these handy. Um, you're going to need a marking pencil for your fabric because we have to mark them with the ruler method. Uh, I'm doing black, so I have a white marking pencil. If you're doing the lighter one, you can use like a purple or a blue. Um, I always tend to use something that can wash out. This is a sewing line, so it may show through to the front. So make sure it's either a friction pen, which we do have on our website. Um, we also have the bow and chalk pencils that come in multiple colors of threads, or threads, multiple colors of leads. Um, this is my favorite marking pencil, and the friction pens are my favorite marking pens. So you will need a fabric pencil or pen. Again, these are for the ruler method. And the other things that will be handy is a turntable cutting mat. Also use it as an excuse to get a nice cute tray. I love these trays. I have them all over the place. The other thing they're really good for is if you get into Legos. They're great to do your Legos, which I know Sarah does them. I do them. I wonder how many of you guys do Legos. All right, so the other thing is a turntable cutting mat. This is the Martelli turntable cutting mat. It rotates. We are going to be squaring up our blocks for, definitely for the ruler method um, and the pieced method if you choose to go round up the two measurements from 8 and 7 eighths to 9 and 4 and 7 eighths to 5, you will be trimming up your blocks. And this just makes it so much easier to trim this. Um, I will put a link under the video. Uh, we are Amazon affiliate, so if you click on our link and buy it, we'll get a little credit for it, but uh, if not, you can just go buy one. Um, we do not carry these in the shop because they're too uh, too challenging to ship. <laughs> so um, look for the link if you're going to end up getting one of those. Uh, if you already have one, great, you're all set. And if you don't want a turntable, don't have a turntable, don't need a turntable, you'll just turn it on your table as you cut. So um, most of the time, you know, not most of the time, all of the time, I will tell you when something is optional and when you don't need to buy it. Cause if you're a quilt junkie like me, you're going to end up wanting to buy all the notions. And if you're just starting out, there's no reason to spend the money on the tools if you don't know if you're going to get into this and you're going to love this. Um, I also did a video on YouTube. This is the insert from my sewing machine on how to do a perfect quarter inch seam. If you're one of the people that left a comment below and said, hey, I don't I need trouble, I have trouble with a quarter inch seam being perfect, I need help with that, make sure you go check out that video. Um, I show you how to use a clearly perfect angle in the Q-Tools uh, Quilter's Edge. These two tools are on all my machines, I use them all the time. They are perfect for quarter inch seams, um, and you'll want a quarter inch foot on your machine at the same time. Um, so if you are having trouble with that make sure you go watch the video and these tools are also available on our website anything you guys need if you order it today we'll get it out tomorrow um, and then we ship everything priority so it should be there before next week's class um, I can't promise can't guarantee because it's crazy out there right now but we will do our very best to get you your tools knowing that you need them for a class so um, and we do have a few kits left if somebody's just on the fence about it make sure you check out the kits for the uh, down the rabbit hole in Crossroads. Both kits are available in two different colors. This is the uh, royal and this is the charcoal. Uh, and again, email me with any questions. I hope you've enjoyed our first day of our down the rabbit hole sew along. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Have a good one.
you've enjoyed this video and if you have make sure you like and subscribe below you can find the whimsical workshop on our website thewhimsicalworkshop.com and that has all links to all of our other social media platforms thanks for joining us Thank you.